This is the Heroes of the Storm subreddit. The mega thread Gamescom 2017 Heroes of the Storm changes grubby audiobook edition. Dreadlord Jaina. Ow. That's there she is. Yeah. Post Theramore Jaina. Uh, yeah, anyway, that skins, that's really cool, but not really what I'm after. The scoreboard now shows quest progress for baseline quests. That's some uh, amazing resolution, but yeah, that's very interesting because we need that for Butcher. Dein Deutsch ist eigentlich gar nicht so schlecht. Ah, danke schön. Dein Deutsch auch nicht, Japanga. So that's a really good change for checking out butcher stacks and so on. Nazibo, very good point, Gorn. Kill feed shows portraits in circles now. Okay. Pa pamal, pamal. Kill feed now also shows quest completion. That's nice. I like it. Kill feed now also shows denied stacking quests. Denied stacking quests. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Master touch, convection. Convection is gone. Law. It, you know how they should have listed it? It should be like um, convection next to him with a baby rage at one single tier and uh, a rip. Like rip convection baby rage. Anyway. Hero changes. Farmed from the Blizzard website by Homicidal. Increased text size. Okay. Okay. Lucio, pass. It. Oh no, no, no. I, I saw this yesterday. Greetings, friend. Italy's nightmare mount is getting released. You could call a horse a nightmare mount. It's still got four legs. Am I right? Jaina announcer pack. Ooh, nice. Kalthazad announcer pack. Cool. Special icon and death timer for Kalthazad resurrect. Unconfirmed for Uther and Malthael. That makes sense, I guess. Updates visual effects for Nazebo's corpse spiders. Ah, huh. cool. Some kind of glowing green pot. That's a duchy, I like that. Baseline Q quest per hit, permanent plus five damage on 80 hits, past and future me becomes active. Where you get a ghost chromie shooter. Q damage reduced. Has a stack counter, and when you hit two consecutive ones, it's plus 10 instead of plus 5. Cool. Hitting 3Q, give triple bonus increase. Greetings, friend. From a level 1 quest. Esporticus. E I like that name. Esporticus. That is not my sport. That is not what she called it. Rip Pierce Brosnan, and man. Gone too soon. Q Pierce removed. New E talent when time trap is activated. Reset Q and W. Reaching through time removed. Swap location with Sand Clone. The Q baseline quest. Huh. 
Level 20, Talents, Piercing Sands, Infinite Through Heroes, but no quest blocks for pierces. Temporal Loop Upgrade after finishing cast again. Huh. Bit of a deja vu. Jaina, Blizzard cooldown reduced by one second. Greetings, friend. Thanks for the subs, guys. Nom Hopif, Rainia, Mocha Mac, and Tops YouTube. Thanks, guys. Where can I find these changes? I am going to assume that it is a um, that it is a mega threat sticky. Greetings, that is a sticky. Friend. The Kevin Huang. Thank you very much, man. Icebox baseline. Upon dealing 15,000 critical damage, gain ice block. 40 second cooldown. Greetings, friend. Hmm. That's interesting. 40 second cooldown. I like that Jaina's ice block is back. She just wasn't the same without blink and ice block. Deep chill removed. New globe quest. Fingers of frost. Plus mana regen per globe at 20, increased trait. Okay, so this is a weaker version of the level 7 Frostbitten talent. The level 7 Frostbitten was boring. You can choose for 15% bonus damage. And then you compare that to all kinds of utility. I like that they removed that. This is a really good change. Just a little bit of extra damage, just generic drivel. Instead, we get Ice Fury Wand. AA deal 75% bonus damage to chill targets. Reduce Blizzard CD bow. Oh, okay. The Dunk Train idea. Huh. Crits from auto attacks. That's super interesting. I like it. Water Elemental Mana. CD from 75 to 60. 80 to 60. Good. That's good. 20. For the horde. Watching a good friend stream while uploading the final thesis. 200 word essay. Even more time to game and many amazing Blizzard efforts on the radar. Life is good. When winter comes, I shall venture north, past the wall, to join this orc in glorious combat. Locator Rogar. Congrats, man. Thank you very much, Frankie. Enjoy. I woe hem. Thanks for the sub, man. Appreciate it, too. Uh, talents level 20, Bolt of the Storm, Ice Blink, plus AOE Chill Appreciation. Probably like Psionic Shift for Kerrigan. Greetings, friend. Ah. Deep Chill. Slow Stacks. Ring of Frost upgrade reduced uh, by him by the Sentex Fire. Okay. Okay. Full talent list by Kalthuzad. I'm going to open that one on the second page. Leoric. QCD up to 14. Half the CD and mana refunded when hitting a hero. Ah. So this stops the overlap of Zul. Oh, application. Chill application. Ah, that makes more sense. Yeah. That makes uh, sense. So there is too much overlap with Leoric and Zul now. Leoric is like a safer Zul. So this will stop the double laning quite as much. The, uh, what is it called? The Royal Focus build. I mean, it's cool, it's fun, it's effective, but ultimately it completely replaces Zul. Almost. They're a bit different, but still. He does it safer and... W baseline absorbs 20% health. What is it? Oh. Less lifesteal. Every first and second auto attack cleave. The third hits for double damage without cleave. This match says Leoric's AA. Wow. Gah. Gah. Greetings. Gah. Cool. That's so unique. That's so different. Level 1 talents, healing tier. Consume vitality. QCDR to say. Uh, fealty unto death. Or same renewal. No block. Okay. And then forest the swing tier, Ghastly Ridge, Paralyzing Rage, Neil Peasants. Huh? Neil Peasants. 
Greetings, friend. Ah. You deserve it. Always great streams. Ultimate O player. Thank you, man. And Ferry Region. Thanks, guys, for the subs. Spooky hand tier willing vessel. Hey, this makes some good PvE again. But with with a shorter cooldown though. And you give up something significant. Spooky hand tier willing vessel. Who gave these names? Is this Blizzard or anyway? Willing vessel increase healing by five percent or additional five percent for full duration. That's not so good. Drain momentum, pump completion gain thirty percent move speed for four seconds. I don't like it. Hopeless and increase range. I don't know, I guess I'll just take this. Level 10, and tomb CD from 50 to 70. CD. Huh? And tomb CD down from 50 to 70. CD down from 8 to 50. What? Oh, he, he accidentally a word. This must be uh, March of the Black King. March of the Black King cooldown down from 80 to 50. Damage per swing up from 400 to 548 at 20. Healing up from 7% max health to 12. Wow. Hey, that's pretty good. 13 talents. Unyielding Despair. WCDR. Oh yeah. Harnet Bones. Which also has armor after. Oh, interesting. A little buff because it's later. Ominous Wraith. E duration plus 100? Wait, 100 what? Seconds? You can spook around for two minutes. Wraithing through enemy heroes reduces their damage by Insane! Oh, 100%. I was like. <laughs> Two minutes of spooking. Just keep going through people and reducing their damage. Uh, 100 years! Wow! Yeah. Grubby, don't play dumb. I play dumb sometimes to cover up for the times when I'm really dumb, Halogen. This time, I really... I really didn't. I didn't think of percentage. Insane in the membrane! Royal Focus. Oh, there's the Gajira telling me to read on. Royal Focus next Q deals 50% bonus damage. Hitting heroes reduce the CD of E by 7 seconds. Hmm. But it comes later anyway. Uh, Mithril Mace or oh, Crushing Hope. If W lasts full duration, deal 15% max health damage to target. Greetings, friend. Mithril Mace increases attack speed 20% by 3% per 10 minion kills or one hero kill, capping at 50% total. You guys want the link? Okay. So quest at level 16, 3% up to a total of 30% extra, 10, 100 minion kills, 16 talent for a quest of 100 minion kills, which will give you up to 50% extra attack speed. Hmm. You better still have spectral leech then, 5 talents on storm tier, burning despair, 175% damage of burning rage. AOE and damage W where W is active. Spectral is 2.5% max HP damage. Heals Leoric for double. Ah, uh, no longer 5-5, five five, now 2.5-5. But it's pretty nice with the attack speed. And Tomb now silences caught heroes. Get Wreck Genji Tracer. Li Ming. That's that's a good change. I hope it's still called Buried Alive. Activatable replacement for Harlan Shield, Shroud of the Dead King. Gain protected for three seconds. 
What does that mean? Activatable replacement. Oh, I thought you could acti activate it to make it a toggle for protected instead of a toggle for hardened shield. It's like, hmm, do I want to be 75% safe or 100% safe? Let's toggle between it. That wouldn't make any sense. I would always go for protected. What about you guys? I don't really like protected though. I don't think it should exist on anyone. I'd rather they increase the cap to 90% armor and have someone with one HP and protected still die. What do you guys think? Is there anyone that thinks protected is better? than uh, the 90% armor even, or 75. Protected means zero damage. It's like an infinite size shield. Everyone should have protected. That's an opinion, Gujira. Thanks for sharing it. It's okay on the Deef. I, I would still like 90% armor more. What I like about you, Gujira, is that you have opinions. I don't like the way your mind works, but I do like the fact that you feel like you can share your thoughts here. I, do, I just don't like your view on the... <laughs> no, just kidding. Just kidding. Mmm... Okay, Lieutenant Morales, mana removed. Morales has 100 energy. Um, after three seconds of not using Q. I'm sorry, Gajira. <sighs> Greetings, friend. Ah, they removed mana. What? I like Morales as she is now. So Morales is Zarya with energy, rapidly deplete to regenerate, only cooldown. No. I don't like change. Well, I like some change. This makes me feel uncomfortable and worried. Life support, each time W. You know, maybe they tested it. Maybe it has a good gameplay effect. No more cleanse. What about Mule? Does she still have Mule? Looks like no. no. I mean, they don't say it. It's not even worth mentioning. Everyone knowing. Everyone knows Mule goes away. <laughs> Only Abathur is the last vestige of Mulech. Greetings, friend. EMP grenade deals damage to shields. That's cool, I like it. Quite uh, thematic from StarCraft. The science vessel ability. Extra arm on W being stunned in extents. That's a pretty good change. Hey, that's pretty good. W removes all slows. Four seconds. That's kind of cool. Quite Uther like. Versatility. Q range increase 40%. Oh, well, I like that. That's nice. Bonus healing. Shield sequencer. The only thing I can say right now is that it can be challenging sometimes to depress Morales' mana pool on the opponent. It can be quite hard. If this gives less sustained healing over like two minutes, then she will become easier to counterplay except just diving her, which can feel challenging or difficult sometimes. Cool. Well, you know, we're never going to know the changes perfectly, but that's pretty cool to begin with. If you want to read more about that, I'm all about that. 
If you want to read more about that, then type exclamation mark Gamescom and Robogrub will give you the link. So you can read it at your own leisure. Okay. Uh, I clicked on the link. The full talent kit for Kel'Thuzad is available. Apparently. So let's take a look. Spazo965. Uh, got it from the MF Palitan stream. And fix a few things. Okay, let's take a look. Level 1. Increase death and decay's duration. So first, I feel like I should refresh you guys on the basic abilities once again. Just, uh, you know, for those of you that may not remember. So here is... Uh, uh, let's see... Death and Decay, launch an orb that explodes and it leaves behind a decay that deals damage over time. Okay. So Death and Decay's duration is increased after gaining 30 Blight. Increase the radius of Death and Decay's pool. Okay. 30 Blight. Now th the Blight is his trait. Uh, where do I show his trait? Anyway, it was like... Oh, right, here we go. Gain one Blight every time a hero is rooted by Frost Nova or hit by Chains of Kel'Thuzad. Reward, 15 Blight. Cooldown is reduced for all basics. 30 Blight, 75% spell power. And that's his max. Okay. So, when you have the full Blight, it also has a bigger radius to pull. That's pretty interesting. Frost... Front Nova, Frost Nova, deals 50% more damage to enemies in the center after gaining the Blight. Wow, they, oh my golly, every single talent has to deal with the Blight. Ah, not everything. No, I vastly exaggerated. I made an assumption based on very limited info. In fact, just a few. But the level ones do. After 30 Blight, Frostnova Root is increased by half a second. Cool. Increase the change. <laughs> Andy, Egotist, Spyoki, thanks for the subs, guys. Appreciate it. Increase change of Kel'Thuzad damage after the Blight. It also reduces the armor. Oh, yeah. Pulling a hero with change of Kel'Thuzad grants Kel'Thuzad a permanent shield. Stacking up to two times. Okay, uh, going on. Collect 10 regeneration globes to charge Kel'Thuzad's phylactery. Kel'Thuzad's phylactery can be activated while dead to immediately respawn at the Hall of Storms. Ah. Kel'Thuzad heal passive heals for 10% of all spell damage dealt while the phylactery is charged. Okay, so you... From level 4, you get 10 globes, 10 out of 10 max. When you activate it, you respawn, but it resets. When it's full, you heal for spell damage dealt, so there's a punishment for using it. But that's still a pretty strong mechanic, coming back that fast. Hey, you woke up. Did you have a nightmare? Activate to gain 50 physical armor for 4 seconds. Upon activation, nearby enemies take 99 damage and are slowed 35% for 4 seconds. Mm. 25 second cooldown. Friend. Yo, Andy, thanks dude. Alright, let's see, which one is best? You get, a per you get a shield when you pull heroes with chains. And you deal damage to shields. I'm glad that they bring more damage to shields. Re uh, resurrecting and lifesteal from spell damage. Or physical armor. And nearby enemies get slowed. So this is what you might want against Illidan. This is, an, this is what you want in a normal game and you'll never take this. I think. Just super out there. Of course it is bonus damage to shields. This unique part might make you want it. Yeah, okay. Well done, well done. 
If it was just shield, she'll never take it. But for this one, maybe. But it might depend on the enemy comp. They seem pretty well balanced, actually. For this one, extra duration and radius, or more damage and root. And this is like, of course, damage, and it's a spammable poke ability. And this one is more damage and, and armor reduction. And I would say pretty well balanced as well. Level seven, accelerated decay. Each time, a hero is hit by death and decay's pool, they take 20% more periodic damage from death and decay for the next four seconds. Stacking up to six times. Mm, not sure how to understand it. Because the cooldown on the Q, the Death and Decay, is 6 seconds, I believe. They take 20% more periodic damage from Death and Decay for the next 4 seconds stacking. Okay, so it's like... Wait, each time a hero is hit. Yeah, that's the one I don't get. Greetings. Yeah, man. every tick does more damage. I just don't know. Each time... Oh, by the pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's just like... 100 damage on the first tick, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200%, 220, done. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, activate to create a spike that detonates after 4 seconds, dealing 360 at 20 damage to nearby enemies. The spike can be affected by chains of Kel to Zod. 30 second cooldown. Level 7 ability. It's not a lot of damage. This one helps to bring two people with the chains together. 30 second cooldown. Kind of like some kind of bone spear. It doesn't seem too good, but could be wrong. Uh, every 8 seconds, Kel'Thuzad's basic attacks hit nearby enemies. Every 8 seconds, Kel'Thuzad's basic attacks hit nearby enemies. Deals spell damage instead of physical and slows by 30% for 2 seconds. Every 8 seconds, his basic attacks hit nearby enemies. What if he doesn't hit? What does it proc off of? His first attack after an 8 second cooldown timer, I would say. Oh yeah, of course. All the damage that we read here is without the, uh, without the trait... Which is bonus 75% damage. Your head doesn't make for a very good window. Oh, sorry. Yeah, of course, this is like the Alarak effect. Where you read the damage and it looks low because you don't factor in sadism. It makes it A into AoE. No, I get that. It's just that from reading it, it it's not 100% clear what it means. Nearby enemies to yourself... If you hit something far away, is it nearby to yourself or nearby to the point of impact of your attack? Does it happen every 8 seconds, even if you don't attack? Or is it like 8 second timer and from that moment when you attack, that's when it happens, even if it's after 12 seconds or only after 8? Like, you have to hit the 8 second attack window and it goes on a clock non-stop and you have to only hit during that... I mean, I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, it's just I don't get it without seeing it yet, but... Uh... Yeah, anyway. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's just talk about what it does. You can circumvent physical armor and you can get the slow. Look, right. I read this kind of thing like a lawyer. If it doesn't make sense exactly from the tooltip, <laughs> then it's just like, create boombots. Warning, boombots may explode. After 8 seconds, your next AA looks different. When it hits an enemy, it explodes into an AoE that slows. Well, that makes a lot of sense. But they didn't say that. Anyway. Launch a meteor of ice. Yeah, we read this one before. Radius can be seen here. Oh, wow. And it's beautiful too. Chain and ice. Create a fissure anywhere on the battleground. Oh, yeah. The precision strike. For 15 seconds cooldown. Increase Frost Nova slow by one and a half seconds. Wow, that's 
that's cool. After change of Kalthuzad stun expires, targets are slowed by 70% for one, one second and a quarter. Hmm. Oh, huh. That's a lot of slow for a very short duration. Pulling two heroes with chains of Kalthuzad reduces its cooldown by four seconds. Okay. Chain link. Arcane Echoes. Hitting heroes with death and decay reduces its cooldown by one. I can hit multiple heroes and I'm guessing the pool also procs it, so... No, I'm not guessing. I'm guessing the pool doesn't proc it because you would have zero CDI. Hungering Cold. Enemies rooted by Frost Nova take an additional damage each time they're damaged by Kel'Thuzad during the next four seconds. Kind of like Janus Chill. Stunning, rooting, or slowing a hero grants six percent spell power for ten seconds, stacking up to five times. Hey, you know this makes Kel'Thuzad the third assassin that can stun, the third ranged assassin that can stun. Illidan can stun with the hunt. Kel'Thuz Gravity Lapse, Rainer with with um, Bullseye at 16. Tyrande can stun, but she's a support, not an assassin. So this is the first, the third uh, ranged assassin that can stun. Oh yeah, Vala can stun, that's true. Yeah. Butcher, not ranged. And the fourth one then. Cassia can stun. Oh yeah. That's true. Sigara doesn't have a stun. Cassia Valkyrie stuns for like half a second. That's true. <laughs> no, Illidan is in range. I mean, that's what I'm saying. He's not range. I'm saying he has a stun, but he's not range. Anyway. When Frost Blast's root expires, enemies are slowed. By 40% for 3 seconds. Heroes killed while under the effects of Frost Blast instantly release another Frost Blast explosion. Hitting an enemy hero with Shadow Fisher resets the cooldown. It already has only a 15 second cooldown. Wow. Might of the Scourge. You could just stand in the core and keep hitting people with it. Activate to dash forward. Dealing 250 damage at level 21 to enemies in the path. Take down to reset the cooldown of shifting malice. Four minute cooldown normally. Dash forward and deal enemies. So a damaging power slide without a stun as a mage. It's like a super badassery calamity. Taking a page out of Li Ming's book. If you fail, you die. If you succeed, you can slide out. And it's probably not unstoppable. Yeah, kind of like Genji Li Ming levels of reset. Except he's wearing a dress. And he must be so squish. <laughs> if you miss, you need to wait four minutes. Yeah, kind of like Genji's move. Activate to create a shade of Naxxramas that lasts 15 seconds. Which... Mimics Kel'Thuzad's Cast of Death and Decay. 15 second cooldown. The past and future KT. Let's see what the best comment is. No, not info. Where's the memes? There we go. Okay, cool changes. Asked. Launch a meteor of ice at an enemy hero. Upon impact, the meteor deals 100 damage to its target and 275 damage to enemies in the area. So it's like the reverse of Pyroblast, which is more damage on the main and residual damage to the around. 